Right, OK, thank you for joining The Average Golfer. I'm out here on the golf course. I'm at Conway Golf Club, and we're going to be testing the new Sim Max hybrid from TaylorMade. And it's going to be some real testing. Yes, I've got dry ball data that will come in the end, but we're going to put it through its paces in real conditions. Playing from fairways, uneven lies, the wind is blowing. And then, how does this perform in the hands of The Average Golfer? Only one way to find out. Let's get in some golf balls, and I'll give you my opinion and evaluation on this new hybrid for 2020 from TaylorMade. Right, we can't avoid tech spec. We can't avoid marketing claims. I'm afraid there has to be a story. There has to be a reason and a logic as to why TaylorMade have released this product and what has it got different than was out there last year in what I thought was a great range of hybrids from TaylorMade. The M6 in particular was a big favourite of mine. But, like I said, let's just have a look at the story behind uh, this Sim Max hybrid and what TaylorMade have got to say is packed into this club and it's going to make it worthwhile buying for an average golfer. Well, we will, of course, challenge those marketing claims out here on the course. We'll get to that very soon. But first of all, let's talk about how it looks. And we'll start off from in terms of shelf appeal. We've got this V-steel bottom, which we'll talk about performance in, uh, in very shortly, like I said. But first of all, what do you think of it in terms of looks? Because I think it looks absolutely brilliant. And it's one that I would certainly grab for off the shelf in terms of what I see from the underneath. But then turn it over and I think, like I've said, with all the products from TaylorMade this year in terms of the fairways and drivers, I think they've done a superb job from the top, from the crown. I love this new grey finish that they've got to it. It's, I think it's gorgeous looking and it's very much matte and muted crown. Again, do, really does tick a lot of boxes for me. In terms of that address, I mean, it's not unusual. It's a classic shape in terms of hybrid shape. And the way it sits behind the ball, I think it frames it quite nicely. You see a bit of, there's a, an alternative colour between sort of uh, the grey band across the top in, uh, crown into the face itself. And I like that because it really frames the golf ball quite nice, allows you to see as to whether or not you're square at address. So for me, at this stage, it's ticking every box in terms of looks, both on the shelf and at address. But in terms of performance, what did it do? And uh, out here on the course, I found a couple of different things. First of all, from the T, great ball flight, very high ball flight. Lofted at 19 degrees, this three that I've got in my hand, and a ball certainly. I mean, to be fair, what I said went out there, you could do a number of things with this and flight it a number of different ways as well. But essentially, it's a, it's a, um, it, it's helping you in terms of launch, so it certainly gets that ball up and out there. In terms of dry ball data, I'll throw out the numbers at this stage. and. A great average carry in terms of what it did um, and, and very consistent and the spin number was fantastic. It ticked all the boxes in terms of dry ball data. But to be honest with you, there was a couple of occasions where I give this a real old wallop and this thing travels. If you want to go after this thing, then there's plenty of power packed in it and it really is impressive in terms of what it can do in terms of distance. But then you go into situations that you see in now where you're playing from the rough. And this is where I mean, I don't know where V-Steel really sits with this because although it's a claim within sort of the um, within the marketing claim, it doesn't. It's no raised profile at all in terms of the bottom of the club. There's a, 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 I mean, it's minor, and I don't really know how that impacts at all. Having said that, it did what I'd expect from every hybrid. It got the ball 
up and out of a rough situation fairly easily and the ball flew out but I think V Steel did it do anything no it seems I mean I don't understand where V Steel sits with this because like I said it's almost barely visible from being what is a flat bottom lie club um, but overall summary fantastic to look at sits behind the ball absolutely superb ball flight good numbers good I liked it from this kind of situation as well. You'll see from, I did it in a number of videos lately where playing from sort of around the greens in this sort of uh, low running one, particularly on a Lynx course. The reason I did this is because it's got great feel. It's got great uh, responsiveness. So it feeds back into the hands quite nice. You can adjust to that feeling and work with it. And I think that's one of the things they did very, very well. Again, in terms of the sound and feel that comes from this club is something that's very much appealing to me. It is a very expensive, again, hybrid club, but I think it's a very effective club and I think would do well in the hands of a lot of average golfers, to be honest with you. They're my numbers, they're my opinions, and as ever, they're pretty much irrelevant because the only thing that matters is get out on the fairways yourself or get into a driving range and give this one a go for yourself. But like I said, hard to be critical of this and uh, a real decent product in this sim range for me.